Kristen, sources tell CNN that the president uh, was planning on, on spinning this deal uh, as a win. He made calls to some of his uh, friends in conservative media, such as uh, Sean Hannity at Fox News. And here is how uh, Hannity, who originally car called this deal a garbage deal, uh, here's how he characterized it last night. This garbage deal, $1.375 billion, pff, not enough, but it will keep the ball and the project moving along. So there was a, you know, mm -hmm. silver linings kind of thing going on on Fox News last night. But President Trump apparently today back to the garbage deal part of that sentence. Yeah, I mean, which is befuddling implies that it's surprising. If he had just stuck with that original strategy, I mean, I, I think... We have sat at this table, and I've said before that Nancy Pelosi's not going to give him a ton of money, certainly not for, like, a concrete wall, but he'll get something for border security, and he'll be able to build some fencing, and he can call that a win, and she can call it a win, and everyone can go home. And that's where this was headed until this national emergency got thrown back into the mix, which, again, takes it from being a potentially good moment for the president, whose numbers have been trending in the right direction the last week, yeah. and throws it all back into chaos. And I would like to point out also that uh, today four notable freshman House Democrats put out a joint statement saying that they're not going to vote uh, for this compromise package. Signing on here, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, Ilhan Omar, Ayanna Presley, and Rashida uh, Talib, four of the more progressive uh, freshman members. They wrote the Department of Homeland Security does not deserve an increase in funding, and that is why we intend to vote no on this uh, funding package. So there, there was an opportunity here for some Republicans to say, the progressives hate this bill. Uh, we could declare uh, at least something of a victory. Sure, and a president who was more disciplined, who could sort of stay on message, would figure out the message he started at the State of the Union, the message he continued in El Paso. He could continue into that today and try to divide the Democratic caucus. Instead, what he's doing is uniting Democrats against the more outrageous thing that it is that he wants to do. Can we back up just a bit? Uh, if this national emergency really had the characteristics of a national emergency, Republicans used to have control of the White House and all of Congress. And yet, this didn't happen. And one of the reasons why is there's not enough Republican support for it. Um, they could have done this any time in the last two years. The wall or the emergency declaration? The, the wall. Yeah. They could, have, they, could have put this, they could have put this spending package together. They could have put a $25 billion spending package together for the entire wall if they wanted to. Now, what Mick Mulvaney would say, if he were sitting here, just to play devil's advocate, sure. is... Um, you, you need a filibuster-proof majority in the Senate, and the, the Democrats didn't have that. Now, I know that that's not true. There are Republicans in right. Congress, including most of the border district and border state Republicans, who didn't support the wall. Well, do you remember how they got the tax bill through? A, a procedure called reconciliation, which does not require a filibuster-proof majority. Um, I, my sense is that there's a, path, there's a path that way. There would have been a path that way. Let me point out, of the 17 conference committee members who worked really hard on this compromise... Only one of them uh, did not sign the final agreement. That was Republican Congressman uh, Tom Graves. Just after midnight last night, Graves tweeted a picture of the bill's 1,000-plus pages all printed out, and he said, quote, With 30 minutes' notice, I was allowed one hour to review and had to make a choice. I could not sign off. Welcome to Congress, by the way. <laughs> President Trump uh, said uh, just last year he wouldn't sign another piece of giant piece of uh, rushed legislation like this one. Take a listen. But I say to Congress, I will never sign another bill like this again. I'm not going to do it again. Nobody read it. It's only hours old. It's a little different, but same principle applies. A little, but not that much. And that's why people in the White House are having flashbacks to that when the president nearly did not sign that bill. And the only reason he signed that bill was because the defense secretary at the time, James Mattis, convinced him that there was so much money in the, for it for the military that he could get the wall money later. And that's why the president has been complaining about Republicans recently, uh, namely Paul Ryan, saying that he didn't get the wall money when he could have, and he's Mr. frustrated Hughes. with this. We're seeing a repeat of that today when the president was close to not signing this bill, complaining about Senator Shelby in particular, the Sh Senate ch uh, chairman of the Appropriations Committee, who has been really negotiating, talking with the White House as, they, as they've been going over this for the last three weeks. And the president was complaining today that he thought the Republicans on this committee got outplayed by the Democrats and that the president thinks he's such a deal maker that if he had been involved, he could have gotten a higher number for fencing in this deal. So he's been complaining about that today. He's been listening to conservatives like Laura Ingram on Fox News, who says, pointing out what the president said there, that he would never sign a bill that was this long, that he hadn't had the time to look at again and saying that he's going to do it now. So he's been listening to that backlash. And that's why you saw the White House phoning all of those people, trying to get them 
uh, to spin it in a more positive way and pointing out what they could say was a win. All right, we have some breaking news right now. Uh, let me go to Manu Raju on Capitol Hill. Uh, Manu, uh, what's going on up there? Yeah, they just passed the bill out of the Senate to keep the government open. 83 to 16 vote overwhelmingly, easily surpassing a veto-proof majority, which is just 67 votes. They got here are 83 votes in the affirmative to send this to the House. The House then will vote tonight. We expect a bipartisan majority to support this, send it to the president's desk, and ending this shutdown threat and, of course, ending this fight that led to that 35-day government shutdown, the longest in history, uh, in sparing those 800,000 federal workers and more federal employees, government contractors, the risk of furlough that they suffered uh, during the early part of this year. But after the Senate acted, expect the House to act, and now that the president plans to declare a national emergency, he will sign this into law. Jake? If he does, in fact, sign it, there's always that suspense <laughs> element. Manu Raju on Capitol Hill.